Hi everyone, my name is Philip Pulley. I am honored that Noah asked me to uh, do a presentation for you guys here at Badge Summit 2020. I'll be talking to you today about the importance of visuals for engagement. And since I've only got 10 minutes, let's jump right into it. So we're looking at the importance of visuals for engagement. One of the things that I find important or has always grounded me is a quote from Stephen Johnson. The march of technology expands the space of possibility around us, but how we use that space is up to us. Again, that's from Stephen Johnson and his book, How We Got to Now. We're gonna look at uh, today some research on the effects of visuals and online course materials and that effective visual is important, not just for online courses, but also for students or employees if you're training them. And I wanna give you some tips on how to use visuals to better engage and reward your students or employees or customers. So first, a little bit about me in brief. Okay, I'm a high school social studies communications teacher. Um, I have been teaching for over 25 years, so I've been at it for a while. I've got my doctorate focused on um, educational technology, but professional development, especially for educational technology, and my dissertation was done on flipped classrooms. I am a Schoology user, and I am a Schoology ambassador, and I was the 2018 Schoology Ambassador of the Year. My wife has 12 years, rather, of teaching high school math. Um, she is currently a college teacher and teaches future teachers. We also have two daughters, a sophomore, um, one who's going to be a sophomore and one who's going to be a senior next year. Okay. I always start th my presentation off of the story, so bear with me here a little bit because it does refer to visuals. Okay, I like to cook. Okay, sorry to make everyone hungry, but this is seared scallops on a warm sweet corn spinach and chorizo salad. This is ponzu marinated grilled salmon in a passion fruit um, ginger sauce, and that's actually a mint on there. But my forays into food were really inspired by this guy and his cooking. This is Charlie Trotter. Um, he's no longer with us, but it was really inspired by this book and a friend of mine who was a cyclist friend of mine, we were out riding and one day he finally offered, invited me over for, to make dinner and as he hands me this book while he's making risotto and says, look at this book and, and this, this stuff is crazy. And I'm looking at this and there are pictures like this. When you open the book up to a, a, a page into a recipe, on the left hand page of the open two pages, you're gonna see the recipe, a little background, ingredients, and preparation tips. On the other side, you're gonna see a full page picture. This is like nine by 12 or bigger pictures of close up of that dish. And they're amazing. This is a baby carrot and a shiitake mushroom terrine with a cucumber little salad on the side there and a shiitake mushroom salad on the side. I think about four different um, sauces on that. And I'm looking at this and I'm looking at all these pages and pages of these beautiful, unbelievable things. I'm thinking, this is crazy. This Who can cook to this level or do this kind of thing. So I went back and I read the forward of the book. And that's where, when it got me, it was the pictures that drew me in. Then you start reading things. You turn the page, look at the picture. Then you go back and look at the, the information. So it's the visuals there. But what got me about him was this. The recipes in this book are only a guide. You can use any or all of a recipe, deviate whenever you like, or indeed substitute ingredients completely if it suits your desires. Okay. In fact, you may want to forget about the recipe specifics and use the photographs alone as your inspiration for putting together a meal. He had me. Okay. And what I want to tell you is some of the things I'm going to be talking about here and some of the suggestions I have for you are that. They're suggestions. If they work for you, please adopt them. If you think that inspires you to do something a little bit differently, please feel free to do it. These are only suggestions. Okay, so today we're going to discuss a little bit about research-based um, information on the importance of visuals in blended and online courses. We'll look at learning modalities, um, the positive effects of visuals on motivation and engagement, and tips to create some visual pop to draw in users, but also provide them with incentives and rewards. And in the case of my students, not only do I um, do incentives and rewards, I use badges for them and minor Star Wars Lego themed to start off with. So why visuals? All our innovations for mass communication, pictures still speak the most universally understood language. And no less of a visual person than Walt Disney said this. Okay, let's get the learning styles thing out of the way here, okay? Howard Gardner is a guy who came up with um, 
a theory called multiple intelligence. And what he was saying is we don't have a singular intelligence, which was the theory at the time that everyone believed in. He says we all have multiple intelligences. This was 35 years ago, and it's been overly simplified in both education and pop culture, this idea that I have a learning style. The theory of multiple intelligence is too often been conflated with learning styles, which reduces Gardner's premise of a multifaceted system back to a single preferred intelligence. Students are visually or visual or auditory learners, for example, but never both. Research has since many times debunked this idea that students learn best when teachers try to match instruction to a single modality. Instead, Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences hypothesizes that all of us as human beings possess a number of intellectual potentials. So why is this so important? Well, what is important is it's not about trying to match a mythical learning style, but rather designing learn content, learning content in ways that engage multiple modalities. So the more modalities we involve with students in our classroom, through our materials, either in a classroom or online, the greater the chance the students or our employees or our customers will learn and remember those ideas and concepts. This is what's important. This brings us back to that concept of using visuals in our educational content. The increased use of visuals engages more modalities and can help improve student engagement and learning. So let's get some research now on visuals and engagement. Uh, research shows visuals help us find our way. We're visual creatures. 2010 research on student perceptions of online blended and face-to-face -face classes states the purpose of media elements should be to deliver the content. Visual elements tell students where they are, what they're doing, and how things are ordered. Okay, Castle McGuire, 2010. Okay, by the way, all the underlying items on the slides here, which I'll give you guys access to, are hyperlinked to the various content. It's more about, however, than just being pretty. 2014 research, attractive visual design, layouts, colors, imagery, evoked positive emotions in learners that can help facilitate the learning process. I feel happier about this and more. it's going to lead to better engagement. This is Plast et al. again, 2014. Click on the 2014 research there for the link. Okay. So making your digital content or your digital badges more visually appealing is a great step, but engagement is more than just making our courses or things look pretty. We have to look at something called nonverbal immediacy behaviors and online engagement. Okay, the 2016 article on student engagement in virtual classrooms found that nonverbal immediacy behaviors or design aspects, okay, visual imagery, audio, video, are related to higher levels of course engagement by students. That's true too. Do you want to go to a website for a, a business that's got very few visuals and it's all text or one that has more visuals to help you find things? Visuals help us engage students. Again, they say the importance of visuals is that idea of engagement. Visual appeal, therefore, is simply a byproduct of good instructional design. So getting started here, let's look at some graphic types so you have some ideas here on these and use them. To engage student learning, there are four types of things here. Uh, decorative elements are the most commonly used, but they add very little instructional value. But again, they can be that visual appeal and make us feel more welcome. Relational graphics show relationships between variables. So to give an example here, this might be a decorative element. Um, however, if you're gonna use this in your social studies class, and be sure to point out that this is a mirrored image because the continents are backwards. Okay, and then in relational graphics, things like a chart or a pie graph like this, these are things that show the relationship between variables. So the ones we should be focusing on here are representational graphics. These describe or portray content for us and organizational graphics that help students grasp the course flow and sequence. Okay, this post again was from uh, Livington and Shaw in 2018. They've got lots of longer research articles you want to read as well, but this post is a good way to kind of get this sort of basics ideas from them. So an example for you guys is that in my Western Sim classes, I use the LMS Schoology, uh, a folder instead of just having the folder and the unit one early humans and civilizations, mine has an image there of a civilizational ruin. But then I took it one step further and added, made it a little table to add a little more description about unit one that's from the evolution of modern humans to the first human civilizations. Let's level up here a little bit. This is what my course looked like the first year you were Schoology. I've got folders in there and you see I'm using different folder colors based on the content within the folders but it's still not great. I actually changed the course picture. This should be a picture of the book, but it's still kind of rudimentary, okay? This is what my course looks like today. I also had these unit home pages in here, and the unit home pages have that same 
um, banner row. This is two different units, so ignore that if you would, sorry. Uh, and I've also got an embedded Google Doc in here. In fact, this embedded Google Doc actually even has hyperlinks to the assignments in Schoology itself. And so this is now representational because it represents you know, what we're looking at the course and, and the, the unit things within that current unit, but it's also organizational because these icons down here are hyperlinked to the course materials. Let's take it up to the final level here. My new course look again, as you can see here, with those hyperlinked icons at the banner. A lot of my students go there, but then once they click into a folder, then they're in a folder of items. But what I've done now is added a hyperlinked table. I put an inline page and put that to show in there. So when they're in that folder, they can still have access to those icons to jump back to wherever they want to. Another one, uh, this is one of the first assignments I had my students do at the beginning of the year. This embedded slide is also representational and organizational because if you look at the big slide, you can see the text in my daily profit thing here is explaining and introducing to the course and that some of the materials we'll be doing and some of the things we'll be doing in the course. This is from Ryan O'Donnell from Template Palooza, and I've got links to his materials a little bit later on for you. Communication research shows that 85 to 90 percent of what I just talked to you about is going to go away really fast before you get back home. Okay, you are home, but you know what I mean. By the time you're done with all your other sessions and you get back, you're like, what was that he said again? So I'm going to leave you with some resources. Canva, a great resource here for designing visuals. Caitlin Tucker has information uh, on her website about um, using things for not just Schoology, but also for Google Classroom. Okay, Ryan O'Donnell, again, I mentioned his Temple Palooza, and he's got some various things in there. Uh, Alice Keeler, if you know her, she does things um, mostly with Google Classroom and Google Content and using Google Content, and she also has a lot of templates as well, so if you're um, a big Google user. And I also have some resources from me. Um, in Principal Leadership, in last year in October, I wrote uh, an article on this that I quoted earlier, and then I also have my website where I've got links to um, all the things I've written, including my blogs, but also my publications and presentations that I've done as well. So again, I'm Philip Pulley. Thanks for listening. Thanks to Noah for inviting me. Um, look for slides uh, link uh, in the notes here for the video. If you want to get to the slides themselves, I've actually, the direct link is just visuals uh, badge summit here at bit.ly. Um, are going to be the slides and tips. And I've also got a Schoology course if you're a Schoology user. It's my sandbox course where I got all my tips for using Schoology if you are a school user. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks again, Noah, and hope you have a great Badge Summit 2020.